Hi, Steven here. Welcome back to the Circuit Playground Express online workshop. In this section, we're going to learn about inputs and outputs. Inputs and outputs are the whole reason that we make programs on microcontrollers, because that's how it interacts with the world and how we interact with it. So let's take a look. An input is something like a button press on the Circuit Playground Express. And an output would be the lights turning on in reaction to in reaction to that button press. So there's lots of different types of inputs. There's in just in the case of the Circuit Playground Express, we've got lots of different sensors that can be inputs. We have our thermometers, we have our capacitive touch sensitive pins, we have a microphone, we have a light sensor, and we have an accelerometer, we have buttons and we even have a infrared transmitter and receiver. So all those can be inputs. And we could also take digital inputs in the form of serial input or maybe a MIDI signal from the com computer. Different ways that we can output on the Circuit Playground Express are the lights on the board, or we could make sound as an output or send a signal to something else or really send any digital or analog signal we want from the pins. So. There's a couple different type of inputs that we get from the board as far as the as far as make code's concerned. So let's take a look at, at make code. If we go to the input section here, we've got what's called events and we've got live data input. So these brackets up at the top, these these top five, these are event type inputs. So basically when I take when I take one of those, it it's basically running on a loop, which we talked about in a previous section, and waiting for a input that's at the top of the bracket. In this case, this top one would be the button A being clicked. So it's gonna wait for that button A to be clicked, and then it's gonna run through the code that's inside it once, and then wait again for the button to be pressed again. So, and then down at the bottom, we have our live data sort of inputs, and this takes kind of raw data from different sensors. So rather than saying on a loud sound, we can say sound level and it will be returning the, it'll be returning live data input for what the sound level is at that moment when it's running the code, rather than waiting for sound to reach a predetermined point. So it really changes up how you can use that input data. Let's take a look at an example code. So here I have some code for a for the lights to turn red when we do a button press, which I showed you earlier, you press a button, the lights turn red for just a second. Same thing with the other but button. And if you look at the code, the button A press does, it turns the, the lights red, it pauses for half a second, and then it turns them off again. And then on the right, we have a forever loop that's looking for button B being pressed, and it turns the lights red, waits for half a second and turns them off again. And both of these are functionally the same. And I just wanted to show the both to you so you could kind of get a better understanding of how the input events work and how if an input event doesn't quite work in your code, how you might be able to integrate it into code without using that event. Because using an event doesn't always work or maybe there's not an event bracket input that's specific to what you want it to be. So say one of the options would be on a loud sound. And that's at a predetermined point what a loud sound is. If you want it to be triggered at a kind of loud sound, then you'll need to use this format on the right to make that happen. Now that's a little bit about inputs. So now let's talk about outputs. So obviously the lights turning on is one way that we can output something. But another way that we could output might be music. So say in this sketch, we want to play a sound whenever the button A is clicked. So we can load that onto our board. And then whenever button A is pressed, in addition to the light output, we play a little tune. So we're not limited to just lights and sound, but those are the most easily accessible outputs that are on the board itself besides sending digital signals. But if you're in a classroom setting and you want to make you want to make some projects, those are the go-to ones that are really really easy to get your hands around, get your hands on. 
So if we look at lights, there's a lot of different light options for outputs. So if you can make programs that have a lot of different light animations or light effects, we can even connect external strips and have the controller drive those. Or if you have servos or motors or any external device, we're completely capable to drive those from this board as well. So that wraps up this section on inputs and outputs for the Circuit Playground Express. Stick around in the next section, we'll learn a little bit about programming logic.